Will you come with me one day to Volantis? When all this is over. I will. I promise. I know she'd love to meet you. And her grandchild. It's a real turning point for Rob because he's sitting there and that scene is literally like love and death. You know, he's got the, the battle plans, uh, the map on the table with all of his troops. And then he's got this woman that he loves sitting there on the bed, almost just beckoning him away from this horrible situation he has to deal with. Despite all the complications that his marriage to Talisa has created, um, he genuinely loves her. and, and uh, you know, we, we have very few moments where we can see the two of them together, so this was a big one for us. And when you have these characters who are so important and Rob in such a crucial season for him, sometimes these quiet moments are the ones that are most vital for us in terms of understanding the characters and, and the stakes here. It's not, it's not a scene that has much to do with plot or, you know, driving the action forward. It's really about these two characters and where they are right now at this moment and the lives they envision for themselves going forward. Can you leave the war for one night? I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. It really does start to feel like both his cause and his, his family have been given a new lease on life and that things are finally moving in the right direction after he's lost his way, especially the first half of this season. In a way, there's the rebirth of his cause and the eventual birth of his child. I think it's fitting that those two things should be in play in the same scene. Tywin's the real power, and pretty much everyone understands that except for Joffrey. And every now and then he needs to be reminded, you know. And Joffrey is still king, so, so Tywin has to be a bit careful. And, you know, he can't come right out and say, listen, you little brat, I'm gonna, I will spank you if you don't um, listen to me. But he does make it quite clear, as only Tywin can. But I haven't been counseled. You are being counseled at this very moment. He's so commanding, he's such a commanding presence and can be so intimidating without having to say anything. You know, all he really has to do is march up those steps and loom over Joffrey. And you see Joffrey kind of shrinking back in the throne and you realize just from that visual who is in charge. Your Grace. I have a gift for you as well. Your life. My life. And the lives of your wise masters, but I also want something in return. You will release every slave in Yunkai. Reject this gift, and I shall show you no mercy. Daenerys is coming into her own in a powerful way in this season. She's always been very negatively predisposed towards slavery because she knows what it feels like to be property. I mean, she was a very fancy slave for all intents and purposes. She was somebody who was sold to another man in marriage, taken against her will. And I think that her feelings about slavery have started to really inform her reasons for wanting the Iron Throne. It's finally started to occur to her that if I want to take on this responsibility, it's, it's almost it's incumbent upon me to do something with it. And she sees this great wrong, probably the greatest possible wrong, surrounding her and she's decided that she's not just going to take back the Iron Throne because it's her right, she's going to take back the Iron Throne because she is the person to make the world a, a better place than it is. And she's going to not just take it, she's going to use it for something greater than herself. The Red God is the one true God. You've seen his power. He's not my one true God. No? Who's yours? Death. The things that she's seen and the things that have happened to her family have obviously profoundly affected who she is and given her a very grim outlook on life. Really what she believes is the evidence of her own eyes and what she's mostly witnessed is death and more death, you know, and everyone she's ever cared about cut down right in front of her and she's had a grim few years here. So she doesn't believe in much, but she believes in death and she believes in revenge and she has her hit list that she recites often and, um, and that's, what she's, that's what she's gonna pursue. I think Arya is really learning 
more and more about both fighting but also subterfuge, you know, and so I think she feels if she's going to escape, she's going to survive, it's going to be on her own. That's the only chance she has and she sees an opportunity to make a run for it and she runs. Unfortunately, she bolts in the wrong direction and she gets apprehended by someone who is much, much worse than the people she uh, is running from. Kick all you like, Wolfgar. Won't do you no good. <laughs> <laughs>